hello in this video we will see how to find the effective resistance in the case of a Wheatstone's bridge which is unbalanced balanced Wheatstone's bridge there won't be much difficulty unbalanced means how to do see you are given a Wheatstone's bridge with resistance is 2 ohm, 4 ohm, 6 ohm, 4 ohm, 8 ohm. The bridge is balanced or not balanced. Bridge is unbalanced, not balanced. Why? Because, see, 6 divided by 2 is 3. 4 divided by 4 is 1. So, bridge is not balanced. For the bridge to be balanced, the ratio of the resistances should be equal in the arms of the Wheatstone's bridge. So, unbalanced. So, how to do the sum? Your aim is to find the effective resistance between say A and B. There are many methods to do it. We will just see few methods. Right? See this resistance, the effective resistance between A and B will not depend on the voltage applied across the network. Voltage applied between A and B will not affect the effective resistance between A and B. Because it is a DC resistance which we are considering. You take one conductor, it will have some resistance which will not depend on the voltage which you apply. So now what do you do because it doesn't depend on the voltage which we apply to do it we can imagine some voltage is applied here. You can either take it as V and proceed. If you take it as V and proceed you may find it difficult to solve the equations. So what you can do you know you can take it as 10 volt. Why 10 volt? Why not some other voltage? Of course you can take. You can take 100 volt, whatever it is. But you choose the number which you can feel. Uh, you can choose this voltage so that uh, you can guess the value of this voltage to make the calculations easier. See, that way you can proceed. Some people will assume 100 volt. But better to take 10 volt because of these ranges and ranges of resistances and things like that. Okay. So, in one method what you can do, you can assume there is a current I coming, there is a current I1 flowing here, there is a current IG flowing here. And then other currents you can give in terms of I, I1 and IG, currents in the other branches. Then use Kirchhoff's voltage law for various loops and solve for I, then this uh, voltage by the current will give you, voltage by this current I will give you the effective resistance between uh, say A and B. That's one method using KVL, Kirchhoff's voltage law. Okay. Now what we can do, we will use Kirchhoff's current law and try to solve it. Let's say, that you apply a voltage say 10 volt here. Then you can assume this point to be at 0 volt and this point to be 0 volt here and this point to be 10 volt point here. Or you can even say A 10 volt. 10 volt here, 0 volt here. So that the potential, because uh, from the positive potential you assume higher voltage. Usually we take 0 volt corresponding to the negative side, negative polarity. Okay, yeah. Then assume the potential here as x, potential here as y. Then what we will do, we will find current through this, find current through this, find current through this apply KCL at x, at this point x, I'm say, I mean at this uh, point c, x is the potential at c, 
y is a potential at d so applying kcl at c and kcl uh, at d you can find out the value of x and y proceeding you can find the value of current through 2 ohm find the value of current through 8 ohm find the value of current through 4 ohm this current should be equal to current through this plus current through this so easily you can find what current comes out current through this current through this will add up we'll see how to proceed so current through the 2 ohm resistance i2 i represent as i subscript 2 this is a current through the 2 ohm resistance or i take the current as say uh, let's say current through this 2 ohm is i current through this as say i1 current through this say as i2 so i will be equal to potential difference 10 minus x by 2 similarly i1 is x minus y by 8 by 8 again i2 is x minus 0 which is x x by 4 applying kcl at c i1 is equal to sorry i is equal to i1 plus i2 sum of the currents going towards the junction should be equal to sum of the current leaving the junction so 10 minus x by 2 should be equal to i1 plus i2 x minus y by 8 plus x by 4 multiplying throughout by 8 4 into sorry 8 here no so 4 into 10 minus x x minus y plus 2x this is 40 minus 4x take it to the other side 4x already 1x is there 5x plus 2x 7x minus y so equation 1 7x minus y is equal to 40 apply kv because we want to find both x and y so apply kcl at we want to find x and y so we need one more equation applying kcl at d we have 10 minus y by 6 that will give you current no okay this current is also coming so plus current in this x minus y by 8 should be equal to current through this y minus 0 which is y by 4 you have to simplify this okay so multiply throughout by 24 40 minus 4y is equal to sorry 40 minus 4y plus multiplying by uh, 24 plus 3x minus 3y is equal to 6y okay so 3x here minus 4y minus 3y minus 7y so my uh, uh, plus 6y will go to the left side minus 4y minus 7y minus 13y is equal to minus 40 equation 2 so 3x minus 13y is equal to minus 40 am i right now what do you do multiply equation 1 by 3 21x minus 3y is 120 this you write you multiply this by 7 21x minus 91y is equal to minus 280 subtract 88y will be equal to when you are subtracting so y is equal to 400 by 88 which is 100 by 
or you can divide by 8 itself 50 by 11 so y is equal to 50 by 11 volt then calculate x so you take this expression 7x minus y is 40 so 7x is y plus 40 but y we found to be 50 by 11 plus 40 okay so after this 50 by 11 plus 40 7x so 7x is equal to 50 plus 440 by 11 which is 490 by 11 therefore x is equal to uh, you can cancel out 70 by 11 volt so we found x as 70 by 11 volt okay now you have to find current through this 4 ohm branch current through this 4 ohm branch they will add up and will give you the current in the external circuit i consider the current here as say i naught so what is that current through this 4 ohm resistance x by 4 x 70 by 11 maybe you consider this is i2 uh, this is i3 okay i2 plus i3 will be i naught so what is i2 x by 4 so 70 by 44 ampere x by 4 i2 x minus 0 by 4 i3 will be y by 4 50 by 44 volt add up these two currents you will get i naught this is 120 by 44 ampere current here 120 by 44 ampere but our aim is to find the resistance between a and b okay so you use ohm's law you know v is equal to ir v is this 10 i is the current outside here it is i naught okay i naught okay r is v by i naught v is 10 i naught is 120 by 44 one zero will cancel 44 by 12 11 by 3 ohm so the resistance across this Wheatstone's bridge or resistance between a and b is 11 by 3 ohm that's all using this uh, method if you want you can find additionally the current through all other branches also because you know the potential here potential here okay and you know various resistances right okay so the answer is 70 by 11 I'm sorry 11 by 3 ohm this is the answer so effective resistance between A and B or AB is 11 by 3 ohm okay we'll do it by other methods also